In uh, this demo, the first part will be we'll create partial network, part of our network. And we will keep adding new LANs to it, new services, and new servers. Our final network will be like two buildings, and we have two routers. We will start with the basic things. I have first building, I have two labs in it, and one router. In the first building, I have two labs and one router. I'll take a router from here. I'll take a PT router. Before I take the PT router, I need to make sure that our router is has enough ports. It's not a good idea to add ports after you do configuration. If you do, if you add ports after you do configuration, you lose all the configurations of the ports. Okay, okay. So let's see here. I think I need maybe more ports. I will take. Okay, I need to switch it off first, right? I'll switch it off. I have two fast Ethernet. I have two fiber, right? So I'll take two gigabit Ethernet. And since I'm not paying any money, I can take two fiber gigabit Ethernet. Come on. So now we have four copper Ethernet. Two of them are fast Ethernet. Two gigabit Ethernet. One fa uh, one fiber fast Ethernet and uh, sorry two and two fiber gigabit Ethernet. I believe this is enough for today. I close this. So here is our router. We have now we will build first in the first part we will build two lands. The first LAN will be like let us call it engineering LAN. LAN. In this LAN or lab that's fine. We will have 200 BCs and let us say 10 switches. Come on. 200 BCs and 10 switches. In the second LAN, let me call it Arts LAN or Arts Lab, we have only uh, 80 BCs and three switches. Okay? Three switches. We need to understand the topology first and the address space. So here, this is our second land. At this moment, we have only two lands. Tamam. Okay. So let's see what we're going to do. We have an address, a big network given to you, and you need to submit it. You need to submit the network. So our main network is, the big network is, let us say 192.168.00/20. This is a huge network, right? You have what? How many bits you have here? 12 bits. 2 raised to 12 is like 4,000 BCs, which is more than enough. Of course, we need to use VLSM. Okay. We will take as much as we need only. We will take VLSM. Right. Now, to make uh, your life simple, we will use switches directly here. I'll use 2960 in the first two lands. Okay? And I will connect them. I'll come back to the... I'll connect the, fir the first LAN to Fast Ethernet 00. It's a good idea here also to recall that you did this to FA what? 00. The second LAN will be connected to FA10, I believe the name is. So this is for your uh, quick journey. You don't have to wonder which part is connected to which. So now we just did the physical cabling. Okay. And here we have the lens. Now we have this big network, which is 192.168.00/20. And now currently we have only two lands. And uh, those two lands, we have 200 BCs. What is the best subnet mask for the engineering LAN? Is it slash 24? Yes or no? 200 BCs and 10 switches. How many host bits you need? Eight host bits are enough. Yes or no? Good. So one good thing to do here is to just to do what? Slash 24. You know that. It's going to be slash 24, right? Okay. 
So, and the second one is going to be eight TBCs. Six bits are not enough. So, how many host BC, uh, bits you need? Seven bits. Excellent. So, if we start from zero zero, our first network will be what? Our first network will be one ninety two one sixty eight zero zero, right? Slash what? Twenty four. So, your network will start from one ninety two one sixty eight zero zero. This is the network address. It will go all the way to 192.168.0255, which is the broadcast address. Does that make sense? Excellent. Bye. So this is our first network, and here is the address. So since our first network ended at 0.255, the second network definitely is going to start from 1.0. Tamam? And you need 7 bits. So it's going to be slash 25. So if you start from Z one zero here, your network will be one ninety two one sixty eight one zero one zero and slash twenty five. So your network address is one ninety two one sixty eight one zero and the broadcast for this one will be one ninety two one sixty eight one one twenty seven when all the seven bits are one. Any question? If you start the next network now, the next network will, is going to start from 101 and 128, and we will do this soon. Now I'll just put two PCs in each LAN. One PC here, and one PC here, another PC here, and a second PC here. So we will connect the PCs to the switches, and hopefully no problems when we connect them. Any port at this stage, it doesn't make any difference to us. Good. Now, we will talk about addresses. Our first network, let us do something like give the first address to the default gateway and give the last address to the switch. Come on. So the first address to the default gateway and the last address to the switch. What's, which port is the default gateway of this LAN engineering? It is FA00, right? So let's do this. I'll go to the router. Since it's a new router, make sure you type no. And now go ahead and configure the port. Conf T, interface FA00. The IP address is 192.168.0.1. The subnet mask is slash 24.255.255.255. No shut. And see now when I press enter, the port is becoming green. Since I am in the router, I'll configure also the default gateway of the ARPS lab. Interface FA10. The IP address is going to be IP address, as we said, it's going to be the first one, 192.168.11.255.255.255.128, which is slash 25. No shot will activate the port. So I'll go to the switches now. I'll give it the last address in each LAN. In the first LAN, the last address, as you know, is going to be 0254. Does that make sense? Okay, because broadcast is 0, 02, uh, 0, 0255. And for this one, it's going to be 1, 126. Come on. So here, let's just make sure it's 0, 2, 5, 4. And uh, now I'll go to the switch. I will configure the VLAN interface. Okay. Enable. Conf T. Interface VLAN 1. IP address 192.168.0254. Subnet mask is slash 24. No shut. It's also a very good idea to tell the switch about its default gateway. Always you need to do this. You cannot do it from this. You need to go exit. You go to the global configuration mode. And from inside the global configuration mode, you would give the command IB default gateway 192.168.0.1, which is the default gateway of the engineering LAN. I will do the same thing to the second switch. Give it an IP address for the management port, 
Bounce D, Interface VLAN 1, IP address 192.168.1.126. Subnet mask is slash 25, which is going to be 128, no shot. And for the default gateway, I need to give it from the global configuration, which is 192.168.1.1. So now we configured IP addresses to both the uh, router gateways and the switches. Now we go to the BCs. If you have so many BCs and all of them are user BCs, you don't give them usually addresses in a static way, manually. You assign addresses to them dynamically using which protocol? DHCB, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. The purpose of using Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol is to to provide a host with addresses. The same way when you now join our network in the university, you get an IP address from here. When you go home, you get your IP address from your home uh, router and so on. In this lab, we usually configure special server, a special server to give you the DHCB addresses. Yani we will put in each LAN a server to give IP addresses. In advanced courses, we usually make one DHCB server or configure the router. But in this course, we will put a server, and that server will be listening to your request and will assign you IP addresses dynamically. Right. The range of IP addresses should be within, it, within the LAN. For example, the range of IP addresses given to the engineering host should be within the range that is not being used by anyone else, similarly to the ARTS lab. One more thing, servers should be given IP addresses statically. Servers always have fixed IP addresses, not dynamic. It's a server. When you go to a website or email server, the address is what? Well known. So now, I will add our first uh, DHCB server to this one. I will go here, and I'll take a server, okay? Just a normal server from Packet Tracer. I will connect it to the LAN. The first step you do is to decide what is the IP address that you're going to reserve for this server. It must be fixed. No one else can use it, and you need to give it in a static way. So I use the first address for the default gateway. Do you see this here, which is 1, 1, right? 0, 1. So 0, 2 is free. 0, 3 is free, right? And I used only the last address so far, which is what? 254. I gave it to the switch. You need to decide. For me, I'll take the second address. Okay? So the second address, here I'm just writing the DHCB. And I just want you to remember the address is going to be what? 0 what? 0 2. Any question? So the next step is go ahead. First thing, when you work with a server, make sure you give it first what? an IP address. If you don't give it an IP address, no matter what you do, the server has no IP address, so it's not going to work. Okay, because this thing is commonly forgotten by students. So the IP address I decided to give for the server is 02. Does that make sense? Subnet mask is slash 24. Is it okay with you? Default gateway, you know the default gateway for this LAN. Does that make sense? Perfect. So now we gave an IP address for the uh, server. Next, What's the, what's the purpose of this server? The purpose of this server is using what? DHCB service. Service Yabanat is a program that you run, and the program is listening to your request and doing something for you. It could be a DHCB server, DNS server, web server, email server, STB server. And each server has a well-known port number they listen to your request on. Some services use TCB, other services use it. The, uh, UDB, some uses both of them, TCB and UDB, for quick response. So now I will go to services here. Which service you are trying to configure? DHCB, good. Is the service on or off? If it's off, it means no one is listening to your request on a certain port number. DHCB will use ports 53, for example, okay, or 69. 
No one is listening. Tamam. We want to, this service to be working. But before, let us make sure we know what we are going to do. First thing, what's the purpose of this server? To assign IP addresses to hosts dynamically. Not only IP addresses. You will tell them also, all the hosts, about their default gateway. And later, you will tell them also about the DNS server. We'll see this in the next step. Later, you will tell them about their what? DNS server. Tamam. So now, how many hosts I have here in this LAN? 200, right? So you need to de decide what is the starting address. You know your network, the starting address is going to be from 01, and we used it for the default gateway. Next address is 02, and we used it for the DHCP. Type. Now we need to tell the server, I need 200 addresses from this address. Yeah, and for example, if I tell you, if we start from 50, is it a good idea? Why not? From 50 to 250 will be reserved for dynamic IP addresses. Is it a good idea? 20, 10, that's fine, but you need to decide depending on how much you have. It's, it's not a fixed thing. You decide. So the service is on. For this LAN, what is the default gateway? 192.168.01. Is there a DNS server? So far, nothing. Now, the point is, what is the starting what? IP. I need to start from 50. Tama. And how many you need? 200. That's now, very important step, because this is just basic DHCB services. Do not click on add. Click on what? Because I want you to have only one, one server here. Save. Let me enlarge this. Look at this. This is your, what we call, pool, pool of addresses. Your default gateway is 192.168.0.1. The starting address is this much. The subnet mask is this. How many users maximum? Okay, that's halas. That's it. Did I click add or save? Save. Done. We are ready. Type. Now, how things work here? You remember we said long time ago, devices usually when they need to know something like ARB or they send a broadcast. Now, even your computers, uh, and we will go to BC0 now. Let us look at the desktop of BC0. Is there an IP address to BC0? Because it's what static. I I want to be uh, I want to do it in a what dynamic way. If I click DHCB, do you know what's going to happen? The device will make a broadcast. Hello, and the broadcast will be DHCB broadcast. There is a message format for DHCB protocol. Everyone in, in the LAN will ignore that broadcast. And who is the only one that is going to respond to it? Because the server is listening to that service. The request will be sent to a certain port number. And let us see what happens here. I click on this one. Do you see that we get the first address for which one? Did we get the first address? 192.168.050, right? Did we decide this address, Ahna, right? Tamam, excellent. Now, I want you to see this in a simulation mode. I will show none. I will edit filters. I will only use here what? DHCB. Tamam? So now, if I go to BC1, I want to, to, you to see what's happening now between the client and the server. Okay? It takes four steps. It, they request. They get an address. They say yeah, they approve it, and they acknowledge it. Yani it's four steps. All of them are broadcast. Okay, see now, I click on play, and I want you to see what's happening now between both of them. Go ahead. Yalla, play. See now, the broadcast is happening. It will reach everyone in the LAN. All of them will discard it or ignore it. DHCB will respond. It will respond also in a broadcast. Why? Because BC1 still doesn't have an address. BC1 receives the offer. I can give you this address, probably 51. BC1 says, okay, I need it. I'll take it. DHCB server will acknowledge, will approve it now. And the last message now is confirmation of leasing or granting this IP address to 
BC1. And as you see now, in the IP default address here, the address given to it is what? 51. So now, I guess I will go back to real-time mode to save a few CPU cycles. So, okay. I will add a new PC now here and show you how this thing is going to be done quickly. Just add the PC and click here, connect it to the switch, and go to the PC, request what? Request the address to be what? DHCB. Since the connection is not ready, maybe it's going to take time, but we got a number. But is this number the one we are expecting? Do you know what this number is? When you see this number, it means no internet service. This is a link local IP address that you must have covered in Chapter 9. This address you get by the operating system, not by the server. This address you get because no DHCB server is available. By the way, why no HCB, DHCB server was available? Because still the link was not ready to reach the DHCB server. So I need to refresh. Just click on static and go back to what? Now the, it, okay, did you get the right IP address from the pool we assigned to the DHCB server? Does that make sense? So we will go to the second LAN. We will do the same thing again. We will get a server here. And first thing is what? Decide what, what static IP address you're going to give to the server. So we used 01. We used 11. I will use 12 here. It's good to be systematic and consistent. This is not a rule, but if you use it in one LAN, keep using it across your campus. This is going to be 12. Tamam. So now I'll go here. I'll connect it to my switch in this LAN. So it's connected now to the switch in the LAN. Sorry, I need to connect it to the switch in the LAN. Does that make sense? Now, first step, when you configure a server as a student, you always forget to give it what? IP address, 192.168.12. Is it right? Is this subnet mask correct? It should be 128. What's the default gateway? 11. No DNS server. Now we will do the same. How many hosts we have here in this LAN? ACBCs. Tayyip, what do you think? Starting address is what? Is 30 good? 40 is good? 40 is good, sah? Because maybe you're going to add servers or something. Keep that range, okay? Do not keep fragments in the middle. Tamam. So I'll go to where now? Services. I'll go to DHCB. Make the service what? On. What's the default gateway for this LAN? 192.168.11. Is it? What's the DNS server? So far, no DNS server. What's the starting address? We said 40 is good, صح? How many addresses to give from 40? I, I told you we need, what, 80. Click Add or Save. Save. Do you look at the, before you click OK, look at the pool. Is this correct default gateway? Is this correct starting address? Subnet mask is good. Number of users is also right. So now what I can do is I can go back here to BCs and go to desktop and now click on what? DHCB. Excellent. It took the first one. I'll switch to simulation again and now show you what happens with this one. You will see the same steps as in. Okay. See now it's a broadcast because BC3 at this moment has no IP address. Everyone ignores the broadcast except the DHCB server. You see the check mark here. It will reply as a broadcast. Why? Because it's still BC3 has no phone number or no IP address. And it will accept the offer, but still one more step, four steps they call it, okay? It will accept it, but finally it must be acknowledged. Remember, this server may be getting requests from hundreds of users. Imagine when you go inside the mall, Thousands of people at one minute, and they want to connect to their LAN. Or when you come at 8 a.m. at university and you're joining our university. Tamam. So now we have the address. If we open here this screen, we can find, hopefully, the address should be 41. Okay, let's make sure it's 41. Okay, is it 41? Excellent. So we decided the range. We defined the IP addresses depending on the requirements of this 
nothing. Who else is going to give them the IP addresses if it's not the server? Uh, no, sometimes someone goes out, but it will all start from the beginning. Tamam. So what I did so far, Anna, okay? What I did so far, 